I feel the spirit of God in this place. Amen. I feel the spirit of God and I, I feel like I want to talk to you. But before I do, I want to get into this conversation. We've been talking about oil here at God Chasers. And if you haven't been here, we, we've been talking about oil and I'm praying for your poor today. I'm praying for your poor today. Some of you have, there's so much more in you. Let me just help you right here. There's so much more in you. There's so much more inside of you. And when you get ready to let God use you, I'm telling you, you are going to see precious oil like you've never seen before. It's going to be, people are going to look at you and say, I don't know what happened to you. I don't know how you got different. I don't know how you changed. And you're going to look at them and say, the power of Jesus is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he, and he has anointed me for this moment. Does anybody feel, wait, 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 wait. Does anybody feel like they're anointed for the season that they're in? I want you to under, I want you to understand you're anointed for the season that you are in. Do you know before your mama met your dad? Oh, I'm going to help you right now. Do you know before your mama met your daddy, God said he had a plan and a purpose for you and an expected end. He had a desire for you to do well and prosper as your soul prospers. And right in, right in 1970-something, or 1980-something, or child 1990-something, 1960-something, okay, there we go, 1960-something, 1950-something, amen, come on now, yeah, come on now, come on, 1940-something, okay, amen, we want to celebrate everybody. God released you into this season. He released you into purpose, and he knew that this was your... Can you just celebrate God for releasing you into this moment? And so, and so what I want to do today is carry on this conversation about oil. But before I do, I want to talk to you about Jesus' favorite thing. Jesus' favorite thing. One of Jesus' favorite things. You want to know what Jesus' favorite thing was? Jesus' favorite thing was wine. Oh, somebody like, I like this church. Somebody, somebody, some, some brother leaned over to his wife. He was like, oh yeah, this is me. Homeboy, all right. Jesus' favorite thing is wine, man. Jesus loves wine because Jesus loves a party. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Aren't you glad you serve a God who loves a party? That's why here at God Chase, we throw a party, man. We got we throw a party, bro. We, we'll break it all out. We break it out. It ain't a party till you got nachos. That's what we... And all of our leadership meetings, they like, okay, and we're going to make nachos. Oh, we're going to have nachos. That's how I know we're about to turn up. We're going to have nachos out. It's a nacho bar. Okay, but, but seriously, Jesus loves wine because Jesus loves a party. And the first time we ever meet Jesus and the last time we ever see Jesus, both times, he's at a party. Both times. Both times. When we meet Jesus for the first time, the alpha of Jesus, we meet him at a party at, at Cana. The omega, when we meet him the last time, he's at a party. He's at a, he's at a feast He's at, he's at a place, and we call that communion, but really it, it was a Passover party. It was a party. And they had a good time, and they would dress all up. I don't know if they had some kind of vintage cologne. You know how y'all do it. And they, and they would go out to a party. And I love my Jesus because I love to party. It's just real. I do. I love, I love, I love a celebration. And Jesus loved the celebration. And we all know about the communion part, but I want to I want to introduce you to Jesus at Cana. The Bible says Jesus is at a wedding feast at Cana, and he's and he's having a good time. Now, y'all gotta understand that a Hebrew wedding not like our wedding. Our weddings, you know, you get in there, you're trying to get everybody in on time. You know, we're praying. Family's not there yet, mama not there. You came with the, 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 the bride is in the back crying because mama not there on time. Like, well, it's, a whole, it's a whole thing. Oh, I love weddings, though. I love doing weddings. But, th but that's a whole thing. But a, but a Hebrew wedding was a seven to ten day excursion. It was a seven to ten day feast. I love, I love that I serve a God who could party for seven to ten days. <laughs> he could just party for seven to ten. He just turn up for seven to ten days. You just might not see Jesus for a while because it's just a big turn. Somebody like, no, this is not real. No, this is real. This is how Jesus lived. It was, they had a lot of parties. And he would go to these parties. And in this particular party, at this particular wedding, Jesus is chilling. Uh, 
Big chilling. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus is big. If you weren't here last week, don't worry about it. That's okay. Jesus was big chilling. And his mama comes to him and he said, she says something very simple. She says, we have run out of wine. Now, I, I, I have a lot of message to give you. I'm going to try to give you as much of it as possible. But, but here's, my, here's a, a punchline early for you. The wine is going to run out. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you go to church. I don't, know, I don't care how much you speak in tongues. Shonda, bada, hada, bada, hana. Should have bought a Honda. Should have wore a bow tie. I don't care how, how much you speak in tongues. No, he's so irreverent. No, I'm trying to give you something. I don't care how much you speak in tongues. I don't care how many of these dances you know. I don't care how cute it is. I don't care what your hoop is, what your theology is, how you didactic the, the word. I don't care how, how long you've been in church. How long you could have been raised in the church, raised under the church. Some of y'all was raised under the church. You, just, you raised so long, you... You go down to the fellowship hall. You know y'all gonna be there all day. If you go to the fellowship hall, y'all just gonna be there all day. <laughs> Some of y'all was raised in there. If I start singing, if I start singing some Sunday school song, y'all will be y'all, y'all will sing it along with because you was raised in that place. But but no matter what, you're gonna get to a place where the wine runs out. You're going to get to a situation where the run, I don't care how good your relationship is, how good your marriage is, I don't care how good your job is. The wine's going to run out. You're going to get to a place where it dries up. You're going to get to, you know, some of y'all, y'all, y'all so in love. Y'all drifting on a memory. Ain't no place I'd rather be than with you. We one alone. We one alone. We one alone. But if you know anything about that man's story, the wine runs out. <laughs> the, the, wine, the wine runs out. Grits, Lord Jesus. The wine run out. <laughs> what happened to drifting on the memory? Ain't no place I'd rather be. It, we get to a place where the wine runs out. And the question is, where do I go? What do I do? Who do I turn to when the wine runs out? Because the wine will run out. The beautiful thing about Jesus' mother is though she is that she not that she had an endless supply of lot of wine, but that she knew where to go. Uh oh, she knew who to talk to when the wine runs out. My question to you is, who do you turn to? Who do you talk to when the wine runs out? Who, where do you go? What what do you drink? What do you smoke when the wine runs out? That's a dangerous part. That's a dangerous part. God knows that you're gonna get thirsty. The question is, what do you do when you're thirsty? Y'all don't know. <laughs> what do you do when you're thirsty? Where do you go when you're thirsty? And, and, and she had the foresight. She had the common sense to say, no, no, no. When I'm thirsty, I don't, I don't go to the internet. When I'm thirsty, I don't go to Facebook. When I'm thirsty, I don't go. Oh, y'all not hearing me. When I'm thirsty, I don't send a what you doing text. When I'm thirsty, I Go to the one who can satisfy my, no one satisfies like my Jesus satisfied. She knew enough to say, I'm going to the one who satisfies me. I'm going to the one who satisfies me. And Jesus, and she goes to Jesus, she says, and she says, hey, the wine is out. And I love this, I love this part right here. Because Jesus said, woman, first of all, if I just say woman to my mama, that's it. That's the end of my story. There's no crucifixion. There's no, it, it ends right there. That's it. That's the end. <laughs> he died. That's it. Boom. That's the end of the story. If I say woman, that's it. Let's mess with boy. My mama used to be able to throw stuff. She was so, she was like, I mean, N Nolan Ryan. Like, y'all don't know who Nolan Ryan is, but it's okay. He was accurate. My mama was, Bang! 
And sometimes I'd be wondering if she knew if I, that I didn't say it, that Andre said it or something like that. But it, the slide will go past my face. She, she was so good that it'll become my direction. And then it'll turn right there and it'll hit Andre like, bang! I was like, oh yeah, she knew. She heard. It wasn't me. She was accurate with it, boy. She said, boy, come here. You know when I got in, look, I got in the most trouble. You know when I got in the most trouble, I, my, my mama realized she was too big. I was too big for her licks to hurt me. That made her mad, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm off the subject now. One time I was in the kitchen and she said, okay, I'm not playing with you. Pain, pain, pain. She hit me three times on my arm and I started laughing. Why I do that? Why I do that? I was like, stop playing, mama. She, she started looking for stuff. And, okay, all right. It's a statute of limitations. I love you, mama. You raised me right. <laughs> she can't get in trouble. Don't call the CPS. It's a statute of limitations. It's okay. It's okay. She raised me right. That's how you raise kids. Amen. <laughs> Spare the rod. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, but Jesus looks at his mama. He says, woman, what this got to do with me? It's not my time yet. It's not my time yet. It's not my time yet. And th this, this is so significant because G although Jesus said it wasn't his time, he still responded to the cries of his mother. Ooh, y'all gotta hear what I'm saying. Though, even though God, while on others that are calling, do not pass me by. It might be on you, might be on somebody else. You might be at somebody else's address, but He'll respond to your cries if you open up your mouth and say, "God, I got a problem." God will respond to you. I love that we serve a God who responds. Amen. So he, he so, but his mom is so slick. They say. Um, they, they say they don't know this debate whether Jesus was like from Africa or he was black, dark skin, whatever. It doesn't matter. He was from where he was from. That don't matter. But Jesus' mama was definitely black. <laughs> I mean, she, not, she might not have been black in her skin, but she was black in her mannerisms. <laughs> because when he said, what did that have to do with me? She immediately turned away from him. <laughs> looked at these servants and she said whatever he tell you to do go on and do it he didn't even get to he was like I'm, I bet he was like mama the, imagine like the Lord and Savior just mama <laughs> he's like mom but no he, he really she knew that Jesus was going to respond to her Imagine if you went to God with that much faith and with that much confidence and with that much obedience that whatever he said do, you just did it because you knew even if it wasn't time for it, he was still going to respond to you. He said, he didn't say mama, that's not in the Bible. That's just, that's in my version of the Bible. The Bible says that he immediately tells those servants to go get six water pots. And this is where I want to talk from. Six water pots. Six water. Whenever you see six in the Bible, here, here it goes. I'll give you a little theology, a little biblical numerology. Whenever you see six in the Bible, it represents man. man God made man on the six. Oh, y'all so smart. That's actually verse one, cha chapter one, verse 26. That actually is, it. let us make man in our own image. And whenever you see six in the Bible, it is representative of man. So when, the, when Jesus says, go get six water pots, the average man is about six feet tall. Y'all know that? I'm like, I don't know that. No, that's real. That's actually true. The average man is about six feet tall. The average, uh, if you average out all the men and all the women and all the heights in the world, the average man is about six feet tall. They're full of about uh, about 30 gallons of water you're made from this stuff you're made your body mass is made from water and Jesus tells these six servants to go get six water pots and fill them up each with 30 gallons of water six times 30 carry the two there's no two I went to Sam, man. I'm trying to put it together. That's it. I'm trying to. Six times 30 is 180. What if what Jesus is asking you to do is 180 degrees from what you want to do? 
What if what if what Jesus is asking you to do is a complete turnaround from where you want to go, from what you will you be obedient to the 180? Lord have mercy. Will you be obedient to the six water pots and 30 gallons of water in each pot? Will you be obedient to the 180 God is asking you to do? Because you can't have wine if you don't have obedience. Okay, okay. So they go and they get the six water pot. He said, fill them up to the rim. Fill them up to the brim. Fill them up as, as much as you can. And, and I, I, I want to come to Jesus full Amen. so that I can be poured out and used for his glory. Amen. Six people get six water pots. They bring them over to the six water Six people get six water pots. They bring them over to Jesus. They set them down. And the Bible said Jesus blessed them. He blessed them. And then he said, now give this water to the, to the maitre d'. There was some of y'all, to the MC. <laughs> I'll help you right here. <laughs> give this water to the lead, to the lead person. And they, and they took it over there. And I don't know what happened. Somewhere between the water and the water pots and the obedience and the 180 degrees, somewhere between all of that, the, the maitre d' picked up the glass and he started to drink. And he said, this is the best wine I've ever tasted. He said, most, most people put the good wine out first. Then when we get toasty. Y'all trying to act so religious today. I don't understand. He said, when we get a little toasty, then, y'all, then they bring out the bad wine. He said, but you, my friend, have saved the best wine for last. I want to help you right here. Jesus is saving the best wine for last. He is saving the best wine for last. And, and, and this is that story. Jesus did something. The miracle is really not in the wine. Let me help you. The miracle is really not in the wine. Because if you just have grapes, a little yeast, some thyme, some water, you can make wine. The, the miracle is that he made wine instantly. I'll, I'll thank God that we serve a God who can change my situation instantly that he can change my circumstance instantly that he can turn it around for me instantly I don't have to take 12 steps I only need to take one step if I take one step towards Jesus he'll take one step towards me and he'll pick me up and he'll turn me around and he'll place my feet on solid ground and he'll do it instantly God is God is a God of instant miracle. He is a God of instant. They say they that wait upon the Lord, but that don't mean wait. It means serve. Yeah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It doesn't mean wait because God is outside of your time. He doesn't, he doesn't respect your time. God does things on his time. And I love it that he, the Bible says, he will restore unto you the years, the years that you thought you lost, the years that got ate up. He can turn that situation around instantly. You think you're waiting on God, but God is waiting on you to get to the place where you know he can change your life and he can do it instantly. He can do it instantly. He can turn it around instantly. He can fix it instantly your marriage your wedding your your children your life your finances can you believe anybody in here believe in God for an instant miracle God I can't wait I need it right now God I can't wait I need it right right this moment God said yes I'll respond to you instantly and that is the miracle the miracle is that they didn't have to wait for it but today I want to make you wine I want to make you some wine, but I'm not Jesus. So I can't make it instantly. (laughs) What I can do is make it eventually. And sometimes you got to thank God for the eventually. Can anybody just serve God for the, can you thank God for the eventually? Sometimes, sometimes I understand it better by and by. (laughs) I'm okay with that too. But I want to make some wine for you guys. I want to make some wine. And and, uh, and we got some grapes here. I went out. Now, I almost got in trouble here because I didn't know know H-E-B was closed today. I was like, I want my wine. I want my wine to be fresh. (laughs) My wife said, "Uh, you better go get them grapes because H-E-B closed tomorrow. It was 10, 21. I was, I got to go get my grapes. I went through the line. <laughs> no, look, I'm get in trouble right here. I went through the line. It was two young girls. They was just trying to get out. It was closing time, man. They was trying to get out of there. 
I love when I got a demonstration, Kevin, and it's weird, and I'm going through H-E-B in the middle of the night, <laughs> and people are looking at me like, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. and the one girl that was the bagger, she's just like, what you gonna do with all these grapes? <laughs> She was so, she was before, the girl who was checking, she was just like, man, I don't care. If you, if you want a bunch of grapes, you know, I got all the, Josh, I had to, I, I had to get everything they had left. I said, cause I didn't know, I had to get everything they had left. Man, that lady was looking at me like, I don't care, whatever. She just kept ringing them up, ringing them up. That lady said, this other lady said, what you gonna do with all them grapes? I said, I'm gonna make wine. She said, she said, grapes go in wine? I said, what high school do you go to? <laughs> this is the school system just jacking y'all up, man. Why are you talking about what grapes go in wine? You never seen the front of an MD bottle? No, it's okay. <laughs> Cause grapes. <laughs> of course grapes go in wine. I knew that when I was a little kid. I was like, yes, ma'am, grapes going wild. And, and, and so, and I started, and she said, well, well, how many grapes do you need? And I started saying, well, it takes a lot of grapes to get a little bit of wine. And she said, well, but how many? And I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, because I just Googled this <laughs> a little while ago. It takes 1,200 grapes to make one bottle, one bottle of wine. I don't know if I got 1,200 grapes here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my all to this. I see some of y'all things. He got different grapes, but see, God uses different grapes in different seasons. It's not about your time, it's about his time. He mixes some of the ripe, Lord have mercy. He mixes some of the ripe with some of the uh, tart. Some of y'all ripe for Jesus. Others of y'all. But God will use every one of us. They, I thank God that he don't throw nothing away. Nothing is for nothing. Nothing is for nothing. He puts everything together here. And I know I'm making a little bit of a mess. It's okay. We pay people to clean this up. <laughs> Not really. Volunteers gonna clean this up. Thank you, Jesus. Cinnamon. Mm-hmm. We're making the real stuff now. We just made fruit juice in the first service. Yes, sir. Cinnamon. I didn't know if I had time. I don't know. I got all the time now. If you got chicken in the oven, you might just want to go get it. Okay. Berries. See, there's a diversity in gifts. There's diversity in gifts. See, just because you don't preach like a certain person or you don't talk like a certain person or whatever, God can still use you. There's diversity in gifts. It's not just, you think it's just one type of grape? It's just one type of fruit? No, God said, I guess all kinds of fruit. It's all kinds of It's all kinds of fruit. We drink an apple wine? Yes, it's wine. Just trust me. <laughs> all kinds of fruit. And, 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 and again, how much do you need? A lot. A lot. You got to fill it up. You got to fill it up. It won't work until you fill it up. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. That's why you got to come to Jesus. The Bible said, I came to Jesus just as I was. I came to Jesus just as I was. And I allow God to fill me up. I allow God to put more in me. And the truth is, some of y'all, you it's more in you than you know. It's more in you than you're willing to use. And God keeps saying, no, there's more. No, there's more. You keep saying, well, it's still got sticks on it. And the part of the fermentation process requires what's in the branch. Jesus said, I am the vine. Y'all clapping, but everything in this bucket is a candidate for crushing. 
I love that we serve a God that don't let us get crushed by ourselves. Part of the entire process is that we need more. Kevin, we need more. More fruit so that we can get the wine that God is looking for. God is the you know when God goes to describe his character in us you know what he calls it the fruit for the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering patience 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 that's why you you, you, you impatient right now you're like if he grab one more of these grapes out here spilling them on the floor he's just out here if he don't if he don't hurry up Look at that. God trying to teach you patience. God trying to teach you. Hey, you want some? There you go. There you go. God bless you. I don't have no problem sharing my fruit. Now, I was, you know, they, they put so much stuff down in here because they're trying to get the grapes to work against themselves to grind against themselves now some fruit that you have is going to break easy and some other fruit that you have going to take time to break so so what they would do is they would put little things in the fruit this is a rock like oh no i thought i was gonna get something but i'm good now player Sometimes God puts difficult things in your path because that's how you make wine. And you keep trying to avoid the difficulty, avoid the difficulty, but the truth is it is the difficulty that, that brings the body to the vintage, that really brings the body to the wine. It's the extra stuff. It's the, it's the sticks and the thorns and the leaves. And that's why, that's why, that's why the, the truth is certain wines are called certain things because of where they came from. And you can't, wait, 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 you can't call it Pinot Grigio if it didn't come from a certain place in Italy. You, you lying. It may look like Pinot. It may kind of taste like Pinot. But it wasn't grown in the environment. Oh, y'all don't hear me. It didn't come from the place that I came from. Some of y'all, you got to thank God for the environment that you were brought up in. You got to thank God for the place that God brought you up in. Because it produced something that cannot be duplicated. It produced something that can't. Can't nobody just copy you. Lord have mercy. They could wear your dress. They could buy your shoes. They could buy the same car as you. Oh, Lord have mercy. But they can't be you because they didn't grow up in the same environment as you and it's illegal it's illegal to put a label on something that didn't come from that place it's illegal it's illegal some but some of y'all oh Jesus some of y'all should feel confident in that 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 the other, the other person label is lying <laughs> your label is lying your label says one thing but it, it didn't it, it didn't come up the way I came up and so once you get the basket full, y'all with me still? Okay. All right. Now, I, I, I would put uh, sugar in this, but uh, I tasted these grapes and they sweet already. Some of y'all get that later. I'm sweet already. <laughs> I'm, I'm sweet already. And so what you want to do here is you want to you wanna stack the bricks up. Beautiful thing, you know what I learned, Pastor Kev, is that is that um, bricks are a measurement of sweetness. So we talk about bricks in a difficult way, in a hard way. We say, yeah, bricks make things difficult. But w w when you measure in wine, the more bricks it is, the more sweeter it is. Think about that. The more difficult situation, the more bricks that came at me, the more, the harder my situation is, the sweeter the, whoo, Jesus, the sweeter the juice becomes. Every brick, Lord have mercy, every brick made it sweeter for me. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Okay, I gotta push this on. Now I need some help. Because making wine is a two-hand job. I love a God that's present. 
he haven't left me he's there with me if Jesus is divine God is the vine dresser now notice here that wine making is a difficult it's a difficult process it requires some strength you got to serve a God who's strong I thank God that we have a strong God but the beautiful well, Kevin that mic is expensive man <laughs> Jesus let somebody else mess with that glass you know how much the mic costs <laughs> oh. and so what happens is you, you, you get put under this pressure and God says I'm, I'm, I'm making something beautiful but everything beautiful comes from pressure and if you try to forsake the pressure you miss the beautiful if you try to forsake the pressure you're going to miss out on the beautiful thing that God is trying to do in your life do you understand what I'm saying and so we get to this place of we don't want the pressure but God says God says if you take the pressure from the coal it doesn't get to be a diamond some of y'all didn't hear that. If you take the pressure from the coal, if you take the difficulty from the coal, it doesn't get to be a diamond. If you take the difficulty from the grape, it does not get to be wine. It has to be satisfied with grapes. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm not satisfied just being grapes. I'm trying to get from grapes to greatness. I got to move from grapes to greatness. I, I, I'm trying to get the, my brick count up. Lord have mercy, Jesus. I'm trying to get my sweetness count up so that God can use me in a certain way. I need you to understand this. Because, because these grapes at the store cost about $3 a pound. It cost about $3 a pound. Uh, even if they were from Italy, they would cost about three pounds. All right. I just figured y'all would get that. Three pounds, right? Because they use Tiffany. Because they use pounds. Okay, all right. But every drip of this wine is priceless. Get this. Every drip of the wine is priceless. I can put whatever price I want. So, so what, what if the grape was $3 for, for a lot, for a bunch? The wine is priceless. And what made the wine priceless? The process. The process makes it priceless. The process, the grinding, the grinding, the difficulty, your day to day. And you keep saying, God, why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to put up with this? And he says, I'm producing something in you. And you, don't, you won't know what it is until I get to the place where there's actually pr production. I looked at a meme the other day and it was a worm talking to a butterfly. And the worm told the butterfly, I can't believe you changed. And the butterfly looked back at the worm and said, I can't believe you didn't. All that we went through, all that we suffered through, all that we did, everything that I went through, it wasn't for nothing. It was producing something in me. It was making something in me. And all of a sudden now, do, or do we have juice? Are we? Oh, Lord. I'm still, I'm still working sound like God because there's more in you and sometimes whoo Lord Jesus sometimes you produce more juice than you have the capacity to know what to do with look that's why people can't get along with you sometimes because you produce more juice than they have the capacity to deal with they get they get your your sometimes all of you can't fit in the little container that you've been boxed in. Sometimes everything in you can't fit in and God will break you out of that. He'll break you out of that cocoon. He'll break you out of the shell. You know when the cocoon breaks, when the butterfly gets too big for it. Lord have mercy, Jesus. I'm helping you today. You know when the cocoon has to break, when the butterfly gets too big for the cocoon, then all of a sudden it starts to spread its wings and it's got to go. It's got to move out of the place that it was in, out of the stuck place, the small place that it was in, and get into a bigger place. And I didn't even know it. Nobody even said anything, but there was juice being made. And think about that. 
the juice costs three dollars the wine can be infinitely more now unto him who can do exceedingly more than what you can ask or think according to the juice <laughs> that's working in you Lord y'all don't hear me preaching today and we think communion thank you Kevin we think communion is about wine but really communion is about process this is what he was saying I, I have to go through this I have to go through this but here's what I offer you not not just the wine he said take this cup yes. not not just the wine not that anybody could just have the wine he said take this cup what does that mean you gotta you gotta go through the process Lord have mercy you gotta go through the process because the process produces let me help you right here the process produces and there's something beautiful in you and every single difficult time you are having every hard time every difficulty you are having is producing something in you can you be still long enough to get what God is trying to produce in you. Can you listen for what God is trying to say in this season? Can you, we, we say, we used to say in every round goes higher and higher, but you know how we get higher in the kingdom? We go lower. So every, every time I turn this thing, I'm pushing the grapes lower so that the wine can go. Y'all not with me today, man. Y'all. At the first service, they would have tore this church up. Every time I make the grapes go lower, the wine goes higher. Every time you humble yourself, every time you let them have it, every time you don't clap back, like you know how to clap back when you clap back, when you know how to, because I know how to clap back. Jesus said, no, it's a different kingdom. It's the upside down kingdom. The upside down says the lower the grapes go, the higher the wine goes. He said, and, and, and the least of you will be the greatest. And then he gave us this example. He said, hey, this is communion. I'm going to give you a little bit of my body and a little bit of my blood so you can see what it's like to have the best wine. To have the best wine. We're going to take communion today. I want to prepare your hearts for communion. I want you to get this in your heart. That God has the best wine for you. He has the best thing for you. And yo, sometimes it feels difficult. That's what the cross is about. That's what Easter is about. It's about letting us know that it's going to be difficult sometimes. But the truth is, he, he took the, blunt, the brunt of it. So you don't have to. And now we get to indulge in his broken body and in the sweetness of his wine. That is what communion is. It is us commemorating this idea that in order to get to the wine, the grapes must be crushed. Let me, let me help you with something. The worst year for the grape is the best year for the wine. We say, what does that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, we say 1985. That was a great year. You know, they say, oh, th th this wine, you know, you get the sommelier wine connoisseurs, they'll hold the wine up, they'll say, uh, uh, this is from 1976. It was a great year. Great for who? Not for the grape. Because that was the year that the grape got crushed. What if the year you got crushed was the greatest year of your vintage? What if the year, right now, we're going to celebrate the blood and the body of Jesus, but you know what we're celebrating? His crushing. And it was a great year for us, but it was a crushing year for him. It's a great day for us. It's a crushing time for him. Great weekend for us. We get to celebrate, have a good time, take pictures with the Easter Bunny. But he had to get crushed for us to get the wine. And the question is, who is your wine for? Who are you being crushed for? Who in your family are you being crushed for? What in your future are you being crushed for? You being crushed right now so God can teach you how to manage your finances later? 
you're being crushed right now so God could teach you how, how to be a good wife later? What, 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 what is the crushing for? Because this is the season now where we honor crushing. That's what communion is about. The body and the blood of Jesus and honoring of a crushing. Let's begin. Amen. Right now, the ministers of the house are coming by and passing out this chalice that holds both the grape juice and the bread. This is symbolic of the, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you look at it, here are little instructions. If you look at it, uh, it looks like an hourglass. If you turn it right side up or upside down, you'll see there's a bread portion. You can open up that. Don't consume it yet. You can open that part up and you can take, protect the bread when we are entering that portion. And then you can turn it upside down or right side up. <laughs> Amen. And then you can consume the juice portion at the appropriate time. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment, this precious, precious moment, Lord, that we do not take lightly, that we do not take for granted. You don't tell us to do it often, but you do say as often as we do, do it. Do this, this moment in remembrance of me. And today, Lord, we remember you. We remember your sacrifice. We remember the beating, the bruising, the brokenness, the cross. But Lord, we thank you for the resurrection. And we thank you, Lord, that you, Lord, you did not allow your son to pass up this cup. When he was in the garden, Lord, he, your, your son said, Father, if you be willing, please take this cup from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, forgive us of anything, God, hallelujah, that may be not pleasing nor acceptable in your sight right now. Lord, we do not want to take this unworthily, Lord. Cleanse us right now, God. In Jesus' name, amen. And so the Lord Jesus, the night in which he was betrayed, in the first service, someone asked me, they said, why didn't you make a stand up? Because when he presented it to them, they were all sitting back and reclined. Everybody back. No, for real, lean back. I want you to do it like they did. And so he takes the bread, which is wheat that was broken and ground and processed into flour, subjected to heat and transformed into something else. He said, this bread is symbolic of my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then he took his cup and said, all of you, take some from my cup and said this cup not just the blood not just the wine but the cup is the new covenant in my blood when you drink this cup do you realize that we are engaged to each other and he said I will not drink again until I drink with you when we get to heaven so every time we do this, we're practicing for the marriage feast of the Lamb when all of God's children get together. He said, this cup is the covenant. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. And when they had all supped, they sang a hymn and they went out. Is my cup, Lord? I lift it up, Lord. Come quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed. Till I want no more. He's my 
Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God. Give you honor and glory for the crushing, God. May the difficult season of our life, God, just like the most difficult season of your life, be the best year ever, God. That it may produce something, God. We thank you for your broken body. We thank you for your blood. your healing now in Jesus name